Hello everyone, it's Mitch Steele, and today we're going to be taking a look at Fellowship, a 1996 42 foot Valiant here in Ventura Harbor. She's a fabulous specimen, she's well maintained and has tons of great features. First, a little history on the Valiant. The design of the 42 foot was adopted from the 40 foot Valiant, which was designed by Robert Perry, the man responsible for a great number of classic cruising boats. The 40-foot Valiant was revolutionary and began what we now know as the Performance Cruiser, which blends the speed and efficiencies of a performance race yacht with the comfort and stability of an ocean-going cruiser. However, due to some issues with the resins used in laying up the glass in the hulls and decks, the 40-foot Valiants were prone to blistering. Now, these were not your typical osmosis blisters, as they appeared on areas above the waterline, like the decks and cabin tops. These issues were isolated to boats built between 1976 and 1981. But as a result, the original manufacturer was forced to end production of the 40-foot Valiant. Subsequently, the molds were purchased by Rich Worstel, who moved production of the boats to Texas. In 1992, the 42-foot Valiant was developed by altering the design of the original 40-foot. Around 85 of these were built all without the troublesome resin used in the early 40-foot boats. But enough of that. Let's take a look at Fellowship, a 1996 42-foot Valiant. You can immediately see the sleek design of the boat and its kinship to a performance yacht. The lines are clean and simple, no superfluous deck levels or extraneous curves, save for that very sexy canoe stern. Even the variety of materials used on the deck are kept to a minimum. Fiberglass, stainless steel, and aluminum. With the exception of the minimal use of teak in the rub rail, there's not a bit of teak to be found on the deck. Not only does this make for a clean design, it also makes maintenance much easier. And on this boat, you can tell that all of the hardware has been meticulously maintained. The handrails and port lights do not look anywhere near 24 years of age. Also adding to the clean look is the stainless steel rod rigging. While not necessarily intended as an aesthetic feature, it does certainly add to the sleek look. The rod rigging is Navtech and was replaced in 2011. The aluminum mast is keel-stepped and has internal halyards. Aloft, there are straight double spreaders. There is a Selden boom bang, a boom braking system, and traveler. Moving forward to the bow, I noticed the raised gunnels. I like that they are formed into the deck, allowing water to flow easily into the deck drains and no joints where water can seep into. There's an electric windlass with both chain gypsy and drum. The heavy-built stainless steel pulpit carries two anchors, a CQR and a Rockna. Heading back towards the stern, there's an Achilles rigid inflatable mounted to the stainless handrails. It fits nicely in the confines of the cabin top, allowing easy walkability on the deck. One very cool design feature are the recessed jib sheet tracks. There's plenty of things to stub your toes on a boat, so eliminating this major trip hazard is truly a blessing. Now that brings us to the cockpit. There's a sturdy dodger with flexible solar panels and a separate bimini. The space between the two is wide enough to comfortably enter and exit the cockpit. On the cabin top, you have all of the line controls and winches for the halyards, traveler, etc. Everything is rigged to the cockpit, which is great for short or single-handed sailing. There's plenty of cockpit cushions for comfortable seating. The pedestal houses the engine controls, a multi-display chart plotter, and an Edson folding wheel. As mentioned earlier, this is a canoe, or double-ender, which is fitted with a monitor wind steering vane which is really important on the open ocean as it's like having another crew member on board. It uses the wind direction to steer your boat on the desired course and uses no electricity. 
Another great feature is the stainless steel arch, which houses another set of solar panels, a radar dome, and GPS antennas. Real quick, before we head down below, I want to show you this cool custom feature. This is a pivoting swim ladder that swings out and down and is very easy to deploy and stow without taking up any deck space. I really like this. Okay, let's go down below. I'm immediately struck by how streamlined the interior layout is. A straight shot from the companionway all the way to the forward cabin. At first glance, the wood surfaces are clean and well maintained. Also, the white laminated headliner and surfaces are very clean. They help provide a bright and open feeling throughout the boat. The teak and holly sole does not seem to suffer from any excess wear and tear. Starting from the port aft, we have the main cabin, which is a double size Pullman berth. There's a good amount of headroom. I like this folding hatch feature, which gives the berth an open feeling but can be closed off for privacy. The two opening port lights give a good amount of natural light and ventilation. There's a hanging closet and a convenient bench seat, great for getting dressed and helpful in climbing in and out of bed. Opposite of this is the head. Nice feature here is the separate shower. It's great being able to keep the head and sink area dry, unlike a wet head configuration. Both the head area and shower get lots of natural light and ventilation. Behind the head is an access panel to the mechanical room, but we'll get back to that later. Moving forward, we have the U-shaped galley on the port side. Again, there's plenty of natural light and ventilation. It has a four burner propane stove and oven, a good amount of storage, both at head level and below the counters. The deep double well stainless steel sink is very nice, making the chore of washing dishes a little easier than it is on shallower sinks found on many other boats. The refrigeration is a 12 volt Seafrost system. There are two deep wells, each with their own set of cold plates. One side is for refrigeration and the other is a freezer. Opposite of the galley is the nav station. There's a good amount of electronics, including a VHF radio and SSB. There are various system monitors and controls. Plenty of 110 and 12 volt circuits on the panels. The main 12 volt panel is hinged for easy access to the inside and all of the wiring is clearly marked and neatly routed. The tabletop lifts for storing charts and other navigation tools. And there's a comfortable cushioned bench. Here's a view of the keel step mast from the interior. The trim around the mast looks clean and free of leaks. Here we are in the main salon. There's a long settee on the starboard side and a smaller one on the port. In between is the center line dining table with two fold down leaves. Continuing on forward, there is a second Pullman berth also on the port side. This one looks to be a bit shorter than the main berth, but still has room for two, albeit smaller people. There are storage drawers below and a hanging closet and shelves on the opposite side. In the four peak, there is a storage area for additional sails and other things, as well as access to the chain locker. Let's head back and take a look at the engine compartment. Oh, here is a nice feature. Along the sides is what looks like a simple piece of wood trim, but it is actually a continuous handhold. These are on both the port and starboard sides. It really makes traversing the cabin easier having these as opposed to separate handholds placed sporadically at a distance from each other. Okay, last but not least, we have the engine. It's a newer 2014 Yanmar diesel with 54 horsepower. This replaced the original Westerbeek engine that was used to power the 42-foot Valiants. Under the companionway stairs is access to the engine. There's a top access panel which gets you quick and easy access for regular maintenance like checking oil level, 
cleaning the fuel filters, and replacing the oil filter. If you need access to the front of the engine, then you need to remove the lower step panel. For more in-depth projects, there is a door in the head which also gives you access to the engine, genset, charger, and more. Okay, that concludes this tour of Fellowship, a 1996 42-foot Valiant. I really like the sleek and sturdy design. A perfect cruising boat for a couple or single-handed sailor. Alrighty, well that concludes this tour of the 42-foot Valiant. You know, as I do more research and I see more Bob Perry design boats, I'm reminded of one of the things that drew me to sailing in the first place. I love a classic design boat. And then you combine that with design features that take into account safety and comfort. To me, those are winning combinations. If you're interested in this 42-foot Valiant or on more information on Bob Perry, I've left a few links down in the description section below. Or if you have a Valiant or a Bob Perry design, uh, be curious to know what your thoughts and experiences are. So please leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day.